right, guys, look. Watch this video before you even think about putting a bow mount on a bona fide P127. That's a toe, brother. Golly. All right, so listen, guys. I know a lot of y'all don't watch videos all the way to the end, but I'm going to urge you to do that in this video. But because I know a lot of you aren't going to, even though I tell you that, I'm going to tell you that the basis of this video is I'm going to tell you not to put a bow-mounted trolling motor on your P127 kayak. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to say, come on, dude. Oh, he's just saying that because he's sponsored by Torquedo. Well, I bought a motor guide to test this boat out because I wanted to truly be able to find out where the limits were. I actually want to use this for a camera boat for a lot of my videographers so that they can film uh, hands-free by simply using this remote. And I truly wanted to test the viability of a bow-mounted trolling motor. So I have a bona fide P127 that is a kind of a late stage prototype slash early production model. And then I have my brand new P127 over here. So what we decided to do is mount this Motor Guide XI3 uh, onto this boat uh, and use it as a backup boat, use it as a camera boat, and use it as a bow mounted trolling motor boat. So I got out and tested it. Now at that time I did not have uh, a one objective mount. So the way that I mounted this to the boat is I simply put the mount that comes from motor guide directly on there. And I just moved it back and drilled through the nose of the boat because I wanted a little bit of extra reinforcement. Now what I will tell you is, since I did this because I had the boat before the folks at one objective have the ability to put the mount together, they have since developed this mount for the boat. I have put this on another P127 and I tested it out and it's going to get rid of some of what I'm about to show you. If you notice here when I press on this motor which is similar to what happens when this motor is in the deployed position. Guys I'm also going to apologize for the quality of this video. This video is more about getting the content out than it is worrying about how fancy the video is. But I want to show you something. As that motor is running all day long that nose is constantly flexing. You know, so I talked it over with the folks at Bonafide and I said, look, I can't in good faith tell somebody they should really put a bow mount on this boat. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. So stick with me through this video because I'm going to walk through all of them. First and foremost, it does perform. OK, it'll get you by, but you have to run the cables all the way to the back. And if you don't, you've got the weight of the pedal drive. You've got the weight of the nose and the weight of the motor up front. And it really puts you in a dangerous situation. If you run the cable all the way to the back like we've done for this testing setup and you have the motor uh, weight at the front and you have the battery at the back, it's passable. So you could get away with that. But I still think that this motor guide bow mounted trolling motor is a little too heavy for the design of this boat. Here's what's crazy. If you say, well, you say that, but I really do want a bow mounted trolling motor. Come over here with me to this boat real quick. This boat is actually perfect for it. And I will be putting a bow mount on my P120 or my SS127. And I'll also be putting one on my son's uh, SS127. So this is actually the mount that I took off of his boat after we put it on there for testing. And uh, I'm going to order a second mount to go on my personal uh, SS127. For whatever reason, there's more volume in the nose of the SS127 or the seat position is a little further back. You guys follow me back here. I'm going to show you something. When you build a pedal drive kayak, you have to have more volume because when the angler's pedaling, that weight is going like this. So you have to widen the boat a little bit. But what you also have to do is you have to bring the angler weight forward. If you don't bring the weight of the angler forward, then you're going to have a stern heavy boat. It's going to sit like this and it's not going to perform well when you pedal. So I really got concerned about that when I got this first uh, production model boat and I went out and started filming with it and I went through some very extensive testing. And when I say extensive testing, guys, I'm talking about like days on the water uh, to the point that I was in constant conversation uh, with the team over at, uh, at Bonafide. And I said, look, man, I don't think this boat is well designed uh, or suited for a bow mounted trolling motor. I firmly believe that if you want a bow mounted trolling motor, the SS 127 is a better boat. And part of the reason is the angler weight, the U, is a little further back. The stern supports that weight. So it offsets the fact that you've got all that weight up front 
you compound that by moving the battery weight to the back, and you're going to have a much better performing, much better balanced boat. I also think that this boat has a tendency to be more maneuverable because it's designed to be more maneuverable. Therefore, it responds better to a bow-mounted trolling motor. But the biggest concern that I have is if you look at this motor, when you take the motor itself and you pick it up and you stow it, you've got this weight up front, you've got the weight of the pedal drive, and you've got a boat that's already got most of the weight forward. It's not a good situation if you get in some heavy offshore situations and conditions like I just got into uh, on Kentucky Lake. I was in some really tough conditions and I was in some sketchy situations with this bow mounted trolling motor. So I had to start thinking of some different ideas and different ways of playing around because I do love this platform. But what doesn't make sense to me is why would I put a bow mounted trolling motor on this boat and also have a pedal drive? Because it's kind of like the pedal drive is your trolling motor if you're gonna motorize your boat because you can have a stern mounted boat. So I got to thinking, I want you guys to come to the back of my, my P127 with me for just a second. I started thinking about it and I've got an 1103 motor and I've got a 403 motor. So I've been using the 1103 on this boat and for all of the reasons it doesn't perform well with a bow mounted motor, it does perform well with a stern mounted motor. Your seat is further forward. So this boat has more volume after the angler than pretty much any boat that I've been in. Now, some boats out there like the Hobie Pro Angler, the Native Titan, and some of those bigger watercraft like that are gonna have a lot of volume back there, but those boats don't paddle well. You know, one of the criteria for me is these things can fail, they're electrical. Those things can fail, they're mechanical. So I'm always wanting to have a boat that I can ultimately paddle if I have to, and I also just like to paddle. So, uh, this boat is by far the best motoring boat from the back of any boat that I've used because you can trim your weight forward and you've already got a lot of volume past center line. So when I take a Torquedo 403 or an 1103 and I put it back here and I use this rugged inline mount from uh, uh, Sportsman's uh, Innovative Sportsman. Sorry about that, Trey. Uh, this thing is money. I've got this one also over here on my SS-127. So I was really familiar with this motor mount already. I love the fact that I can put the power pole on here. And I love the fact that I can also run the motor. It works great. But getting the motor back from the stern of the boat, think of a jack plate or racing boats, how they have the motor back. What happens with a motor is it has a tendency to suck the back end of a boat down. Because as it starts to go forward, it's angled because the boat's angled. So let me show you on this motor. If you want to come around here real quick, I'm going to show these guys what I'm talking about. So when the boat first starts off, the motor's angled uphill. So it wants to suck the back end down. And then as it levels out, that motor is more in a, the proper uh, angle of attack. But the problem is in a boat like the SS-127 is when that motor first starts, it sucks the back end down. And when it sucks the back ends down, you've got more wetted surface on the side of the boat. Wetted surface in aviation speak creates additional coefficient of friction. Coefficient of friction is a fancy word for drag. Drag is a fancy word for you go slower, okay? So what I love about this rugged inline mount from Innovative Sportsman is it gets the motor back. I can also still use the power pole. So after I de determined that this boat doesn't perform well with a bow mounted trolling motor, I knew that there are a lot of folks that are gonna still want a bow mounted trolling motor. I also knew that I'm one of the guys that has been pushing the narrative for the bow mounted trolling motor. I've also gone out and fallen in love with the spot lock capabilities and the easy to maneuver capabilities of that remote. But it doesn't fit about 80% of my fishing, which is river fishing, lake fishing, or flooded backwater backcountry fishing, where I'm in grass and thickets and things like that. So I've got to have a boat I can paddle. I don't want to have all that weight up on the bow. Guys, I know I'm blessed, say that up front, both in the gear that I have and the beautiful woman that I have behind that camera right there, but I feel it's important to share with you uh, some early thoughts. Usually I wait till all this stuff is done and I don't share the work product with you. And I think it's important to start sharing some of my ideas along the way because we're a family, okay? We're a community and we can all help each other. Your ideas can help make my ideas better and my ideas can help make yours better, help you pick the right watercraft. I don't care what boat you pick. I don't care what motor you pick. And as long as it's the motor that you'll use and the boat that you'll use, 
So here's what's crazy about the way that this boat was set up. I was on Innovator Sportsman seeing if he had come up with some kind of solution because I also I wanted a little more rudder authority than what the, the, the P127 had because I wanted to be able to control it with the motor. So I got to thinking. And I put the motor on the front. Now I gotta be honest with you, in a rudimentary setting, I just put it on there. I put the steering cables on there and I was just steering it with my hands just to see if it would work. So here's what actually happened. I was able to take the Torquedo motor mount. I was able to put it on the front of the boat and I was able to use the 403, which is the lighter motor, turn this around backwards, hook my steering cables up to it and run it to the back. Now I've got a bow mounted, lightweight trolling motor that if I truly absolutely want to have a bow mounted motor on this boat, you can. But what's also cool about this is this is in effect the only motor that I know of, well, maybe other similar motors like this, um, like the Newport Vessels or Big Spear or whatever, may be able to do the same thing. I'll have to look into that. But I can take this motor off and move it to the back or the front, depending on the conditions that I'm in. So I'm a little bit excited about that. I still am not 100% sure I'm going to use this motor in the front because it doesn't have the kick-up feature. But what is cool about it is I can hook these cables up I can run it through the hole of the boat and I can use the same handle to steer this that I use to steer the boat. But it gets even better. So come over here with me real quick. I want to reiterate this all through the video. I don't recommend this type of bow mount on a P127. It's just too much weight. If you absolutely have to do a bow mount, then the Torquedo is probably a better bet because you can use it front or back. But if you say to yourself, I like bow mount fishing, I think that I'm going to bow mount fish. I say skip the pedal drive altogether. Don't buy the P127. Go with an SS127. Save yourself a little bit of money on the boat. You're going to have a boat that will paddle well, and it's going to perform better with that motor. And you can put a rudder on this thing and steer it, and you get double steering. That's what's also cool about the lightweight functionality of the Torquedo is you can steer from the cockpit, or you can lock it in a fixed position, and you can steer with your rudder because the motor's out front the actual rudder of the boat will still steer it. But I wanted more rudder authority than that. So when I was on Innovative Sportsman and looking around, Trey had done it again. He had knocked it out of the park. Well, I got this product in. This is a big thing. This is a big part of why I'm excited about this video and also why I'm sharing it with you before I even have this solution figured out. Okay, so this is a drop-in rudder. I can drop this rudder in on the back of my SS-127 I can connect that to my rudder lines. Actually, you guys are going to say, dude, you should have showed me. So let me show you. I can actually just take this rudder, and instead of using the rudder that comes in the boat, which is great, but it needs a little bit more authority, and the further you get it back on the back of the boat, the more control you're going to have, right? So I can mount this back here. I can take my lines, run it back here, and just connect it to the steering mechanism from Torquedo, or just drill a hole in here, put a bolt through it with two eye bolts, and I can steer my rudder with my rudder handle. Okay, well, I actually ordered this because I wanted to put it on the front of the boat. You're going to say to me, what the hell did you want to put it on the front of the boat for? Well, I ordered this rudder specifically to go on the back of the P127 so that when I wasn't using a back motor or a front motor, I could stick this back there and I could use it as the rudder. Okay, so then the light bulb went off because I'd already put this mount on the front of my SS127. I've been playing around with Active Target, Live Sight, and some of these other deals. Uh, and I fished with uh, Fluke Master, Gene Jensen, last week. He gave me a lot of ideas on how to rig his boat. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. The power pole on the front of this boat actually performs really well. I've put that up there quite a bit. I've got some really cool videos coming where I put the camera on the power pole on the front of the boat, and it really gives you some cool angles. And again, this is also why this boat is so cool and why the combination of an SS-127 and a P-127 it's cool. Again, at the end of the video, I'm going to sum all this up for you. And I'm also going to put it in the description box. And I really want you guys to chime in. There's going to be a lot of discussions to be had in the comment section. I just did a walkthrough on the P127, but I felt it was imperative to get this video out. Because one, I wanted to make sure you guys understood. I'm not endorsing this boat as a motor, a bow mount motor boat. It's just not a good idea. Too much weight. And it doesn't make sense when you already have the pedal drive. And if you're going to leave the pedal drive at home, get a boat that performs better with a bow mount, get the SS-127, save yourself, you know, the 1500 bucks on the boat itself, 
and just put that towards your motor. But here's a really exciting thing about this P127, because one thing I am going to do with this boat is leave the pedal drive at home, use my motor, and use it to cover water for scouting. I'm going to take my paddle, obviously, and you should too, always. Never leave your paddle at home. But this rudder mount has got me thinking, how awesome would it be to have your live sight or your active target or your 360 or whatever where you don't have to reach down and steer it with your hand? Okay, or if you do have to reach down and steer it with your hand, you don't have this bar sticking off the side of your kayak. Wait till you guys see the contraption Fluke Master came up with for steering his, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But um, I'm going to mount my transducer arm right here on this blade, and what I'm going to do is take the blade out and make another plate to connect my transducer to. And here's what's really exciting. I am going to take the Yak Attack cell block that I use for my battery for my depth finder, drill a hole in the top of it, and I'm going to put the handle that goes to the P127 for steering with the rudder. I'm going to run my cables through the boat, I'm going to bring them out, and I'm going to connect them inside that box. Then what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to have my live sight transducer on the end of this arm. I'm going to be able to have a cord on it where I can pull it up and stow it and get it out of the water. If I'm coming into a boat ramp, if I'm going into shallow water, if I'm running into vegetation, or if I'm traveling from spot to spot and I want to take it up out of the water, I just raise it up. This blade will be flush and I can slide it back and it'll stow out of the way. But more importantly, I will be able to sit back and aim my transducer wherever I want it to, see on active target what the fish are doing, cast out and watch them respond to my lure. So I'm excited, okay, to say the, to say the least. So I want to get your thoughts on the bow mount, transducer mount, where I can actually steer, because I'm thinking down the road I might even hook this up to pedals, where when I don't have the pedal drive in, I can use my motor, I could drive around, I can actually use my feet to, to look around, for lack of a better way of putting it, to see what's going on. Um, but this is a, another use of this bow mount. And it sucks because part of the reason behind this bow mount was to literally make it easy to bow mount a trolling motor. Again, two big reasons is it makes the boat too nose heavy for performance and it just flexes too much. If you look at the boat right here, you can just see it flexes uh, even with the, um, the mount from the guys at One Objective, which by the way, the guys at One Objective, um, Josh is awesome. Uh, the, both of the, those guys are awesome. They knocked it out of the park with the mount and it will work, okay? I'm just not a fan of it, and I think you need to think long and hard before putting a bow mount and putting that much weight on the front of the P127. I think if you're going to do that, you should just get the SS127 or a similar watercraft and bow mount those boats that are more uh, suited for it. This boat performs well as a pedal drive. It pedals well. It performs Honestly, I've not yet been in a boat that has as good a performance numbers as this boat does with a stern mounted motor. And I'm really interested in getting out there and playing around with having a 403 on the front and an 1103 on the back and just kind of seeing how that works and seeing how this boat handles the lightweight motor on the front. So again, I've got to reserve judgment on that. But I will say this, this XI3, bad to the bone. <laughs> uh, my camera guys in rough conditions, being able to hit that spot lock and hold position was a godsend. Um, personally, for me, fishing, it's only going to apply to about 15 or 20 percent of the type of fishing that I do now, but I am going to do more of it. Uh, when it syncs up with your electronics, the ability to run courses and go from waypoint to waypoint and all that is really going to take fishing to the next level. Um, I just can't, in good faith, endorse it for a bow mount for the P127. So guys, I'm going to sum this up. I'm excited about some of the options and opportunities. I am going to give you guys a full walkthrough of the P127, but I'm going to do it on the water. I gave you the overview. The way that I'm doing these videos is overview, full day of fishing, final rigging. That's how I'm going to do all boat reviews, so keep that in mind for you guys that go, you should have shown more close-ups of the stuff. That's going to come in the on the water, day on the water boat uh, overview. So the way I'm doing these videos, three-part series. Overview, initial impressions full day on the water, and then my final overview and rigging uh, suggestions or recommendations. And by and large, I'm going to try to get two boats for situations like this where I think that there's two really good configurations and rig them up both ways to show it to you guys. Uh, or maybe I'll pair up with another pro or another angler that has that boat that's going to configure it differently. But I wanted to wish you guys all a Merry Christmas because this is the last time I'm going to talk to you before Christmas. I'm going to take a little break for a few days. I'll see you all right after Christmas. 
Um, we're about to crank up the content machine. So y'all light up that comment section below. Tell me what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of, what your thoughts are on my opinions on the bow mount for the Bonafide, what your opinions are on this bow mount configuration for steering my insert brand here, whether it's Lowrance, Active Target, Live Sight, Live Scope, Panoptics, whatever. What are your thoughts on mounting that on the front where it's steerable? Uh, and then what are your overall thoughts you know, on pedal drives having bow mount motors in general? I think it's redundant and I think you're better off having a stern mount. I might be a little biased. Who knows? I've been in this game for so long and I've been so heavily involved in the design of bona fide boats in the past. Now, I wasn't design involved in the design of this boat, so I will be giving you guys some opinions uh, on some things about this boat. I do have to answer one question before I go because this question has come up every single time I posted this boat. How is it for capacity? Man, you're a big old boy like I am. How does it do for capacity? Uh, it doesn't do well uh, for a dry. Okay, I'm gonna tell you why that is. If you follow me around here, and then we're gonna end the video on this. It does really well with scupper plugs in it, okay? And for years, I haven't been a big fan of scupper plugs. I also don't mind getting wet. It's a water sport, but I also get that in the wintertime, you don't wanna get wet. But there is a balance that you have to find to have a boat that you can paddle, a boat that's gonna perform well, and a boat that's gonna have enough depth that when your pedals go round and round, that you've got a good pedal arc. So the deck had to be lowered a little bit to compensate for that. And because the deck needed to be lowered, it's a little bit wetter ride. I get anywhere between an inch and a half and three inches of water, depending on the conditions in the boat. Now I've gained back a little bit of weight for Thanksgiving and Vegas and all that other stuff, but I'm still 100 pounds down from where I was before and still get quite a bit of water in this boat. So I will be running this boat with scuppers. Um, the seat is comfortable. The seat height to pedal height could be better in my opinion. I think the seat could be a little higher, so I'm going to play around with shimming it. I'm also going to play around with doubling up on my kayak cushions. Might make that better, and it might make it more comfortable. But by and large, I'm loving this boat, okay? I just wanted to let you guys know, don't put a bow mount trolling motor, especially a heavy one like the motor guide on this boat. Find a boat that's more suited for it if you're going to go that route. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching today's video. Merry Christmas to all of y'all. Do me a favor, if you haven't done so yet, consider joining KBF. Help us grow this community. Help me bring you guys more content like this. There'll be a link in the description box. Go check out all the options. They're all a great value. And I'll see y'all in the next video.